Hello, what's up? Hope you guys are having a good day. If you want to give your heart and love to God and Jesus, call CBN at 1-800-775-9413. That's a real prayer line if you want prayers. Um, and then if you go to their website, you can submit your prayers and a bunch of people will pray for you. You can pray for uh, a bunch of other people in there too. It's pretty neat. And just check it out, www.cbn.com. They've got pretty neat things on there. After you say this prayer, they'll send you an awesome little booklet called A New Day. It has questions and answers you might have about coming to know Father God and Jesus. Um, and then they have a super book app for your kids um, that you can download. Out of all the other Bible apps, it's the easiest and quickest download. Um, it has a whole Bible on it if you want to read the Bible. Uh, sometimes I forget my Bible and so I just pull out that app because I have it on my phone. Um, and you can read your Bible or follow along with your Bible there. Um, so again, I jumped about seven years ago, Jesus returned, I got left behind, but praise God, somebody uh, shared Jesus on Facebook, um, and that's all it took, that's all it took, um, well, Jesus saved me, I didn't, <laughs> that person didn't save me, I know that, you know, they stepped out in faith, though. there's people that step out in faith, um, and they go by the Holy Spirit, it's not them, it's just, the love they have for God and Jesus and I love that Jesus and Father God has for you um, that he wants you to know about him that he's real and that he loves you so much it's a real love it feels like my mom's hugs when you say this prayer and you mean it with your whole heart um, it's the only way I can describe it it's, it feels like one of your best friends hugs when you haven't seen them in a long time and you just want to give them a hug. That's what it feels like. A friend's hug. It feels like your mom's hug. That's what, to me, God's love is, feels like. And uh, there's lots of testimonies out there that describe that same feeling that they've had when they've encountered Jesus. And it wasn't anybody else that saved them. For it's by grace that we've been saved. It looks like barely is anybody saved at all. Uh, it looks uh, pretty scary up there, too. It's, it looks like uh, going to a courthouse, uh, one of the highest courthouses, I guess the highest. <laughs> and um, towards the end of the age, it looked like they were separating. The left were going on one side, the barely saved at all, we were going to the right. Um, and these huge holy angels did look like um guards or i don't know they even had like the it sounded really like an army up there but like to me it's so <laughs> it's so old um even when he talks to me sometimes um or just saying things they kept telling me in 2016 your redemption draweth nigh I was like, draw off with my, what is, is that like, <laughs> I don't know, it's so old, like ancient, even the chains that I had on were like, to me, really old and ancient. So when I first had that Jesus returning dream, I was in these huge brown chains of sin. I didn't know they were chains of sin. Um, it looked like I was going to a city set on fire. The city was set on fire. It looked like it was burning and these demons were dragging us to it and they were laughing. Um, so, so that's what a bunch of other people, you know, they experience this and they hear these demons like laugh and they swear and they, they sound like how rebellious most kids or things sound like when they're swearing and they're just being kind of I don't know, scary. <laughs> and that's what it looked like too. Some of these, when the 
it does it looks like rapture that's the only way i could describe it does it looks like rapture like how they describe rapture these people shooting up in lights with the white lights going up to father god and jesus and uh it looks pretty amazing it's real jesus is real god is real and that's you have to believe that when you say this prayer um, if you can, get down on your hands and knees and pray to him. He is a king. Um, he has like lots of crowns to me. They look like 3D crowns. Like, um, I don't know. I was, what's it talk about? Like a couple days ago, I looked outside on the leaves and it looked like gold. It looked like gold. Gold up there, like gold. <laughs> it just felt like we were we we're going sooner than most people think it looks like any other ordinary day. Um, so a couple of days ago, somebody posted what this other girl's testimony. And she was talking about your like these earrings being ripped out or these your tattoos being coming off, and it was painful. Um, some of these other guys described their tattoos coming off, but it was, they didn't feel any pain. It was just, they were, you're wiped <laughs> clean, so you have no sin on you. Uh, even uh, when we've, we've done, um, worshipped with other people back home and we were entering into the true presence of Father God and Jesus. Um everybody's hands were in the air and we were just surrendered to father god worshiping and praising father god and jesus it did it felt like do we needed to remove the earrings and the things we had on our neck and um, even take off our shoes and our boots and then like truly kneel and be in the presence of god that's what it felt like and that's where um, those holy angels, like, they, they don't know to you like you're supposed to be in church and show respect to God. <laughs> Jesus, at the same time, he feels like a friend or, your, again, your mom's feeling. And you can pray for people to be saved, too, when your those prayers go up. They look like letters written and the bright white light, and they go up there, and sometimes... You have to cover them with the blood of Jesus because these things will start trying to come out and shed it up and they'll try to shut you up too. I always get <laughs> attacked weird in the spiritual realm, but I keep going. I'm like, nope, it must mean that somebody's going to get saved or something's going to happen. You have to warrior up, armor up, put, put God on. It says, you know, that breastplate of righteousness. It talks about this in Exodus. Um, to the, the, the breastplate that God instructed them to put on, you know, um, breastplate of righteousness on, the belt of truth on, the helmet of salvation on, Ephesians chapter 6, um, when you're putting it on, you're putting on, um, you're basically, you're asking Father God to protect you and you have all these promises that you you are redeemed back to God because of what Jesus did at the cross. Praise God that you have your salvation um, was paid for in full. Um, and the belt of truth on, so God does not lie. Uh, Jesus doesn't lie. If you follow after Father God and Jesus, you try to stay away from lying. Um, it's a sin. <laughs> oh, what else? Um, feet are shod with gospel preparation of peace. So there's four testimonies testifying of what uh, that Jesus came in the flesh. Um, true accounts from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, they wouldn't testify and tra people try to kill John, <laughs> the Apostle John. They try to boil him alive. They 
did all kinds of stuff, even, you know, Saul, Saul, before he became Paul, Paul, God yelled at him, why are you persecuting me? He thought he was doing something, um, trying to yell at other people. He was stopping people from he, what he thought was um, blasphemy or wrong. And so when, uh, you know, Stephen in the book of Acts, um, they stoned him to death. Uh, God, God said, you know, to Saul, he wasn't persecuting Stephen or whoever he has. He said, why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting God? Um, again, so it's not me that goes forth and warns either. I don't <laughs> no, no, that much either about the Bible. I still even, it's been seven years going on eight years. This October, it'll be a whole eight years since um, somebody posted Jesus on Facebook. Um, and it would, that light of hope would close. Um, it was Abraham Eppley George's testimony. It was about two pages long. And I was pretty amazed. I was like, I was like, wow, God really healed this guy that um, <laughs> can read his testimony too. It sounds, you know, kind of mischief, uh, you know, drinking and getting stoned and stuff. And then he, he ends up getting hurt. And then these, this pastor prays over him and says, you know, if it's God's will that he live, amen. Uh, and so you can read Abraham Mipley George's testimony as a book of two, The Celestial Traveler by Glenn Herman. Uh, it's a pretty affordable book. I think it's like $10 on Amazon. Um, it might be a little more, but it's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, yeah, it's like a true account of what Jesus showed him and all these other people are, you know, in awe of what God showed him. Amen. So, praise God. Let's go out and bless people. Bless them. I'll just go out and tell people about Father God and Jesus. <laughs> Um, when you do, like, follow in obedience to things, like, he takes care of you. He makes a way when there seems to be no way. I have no idea how, how he does that. But... Oh, I almost thought there was a bright light coming from somewhere. <laughs> Just cloud. It's, the snow's coming and it's getting really cold. Uh, Alright, I'll talk to you guys later. You guys have a good day, y'all. Yeah.